Hi, it's Brian with Quixie 98.3. So I know things are very different right now, but we wanted to do something fun for the kids that are at home. Now, I know a lot of uh, young ones are still taking their school classes through uh, non-traditional instruction days. And then there's maybe little preschool brothers and sisters at home that aren't in school yet, but their schedules are different right now too. Why not have some fun since things are gonna be so different for a while? I decided I wanted to read some books. Now I got this idea from some other grown-ups out there that I've seen take this time to do this with the young folks. And I thought, how about some books that I really enjoyed when I was a little boy? And I went through my collection at home and these were actually some of my books when I was a little boy. I wanted to get started today with one of my favorites. It's called Mouse Soup. And this book was originally released in 1977. I probably got this at a Scholastic Book Fair at my school in Hevener, Oklahoma when I was in about the first grade. It is by Arnold LaBelle, and it's called an I Can Read book, and it would have been one of the first chapter books I ever read. You can see the cover's really well worn, and I spent many, many hours reading this book or having it read to me when I was a little boy. Well, let's get started, shall we? So there are four parts in this book. There's the stories for the soup, there's the bees in the mud, two large stones, the crickets, and the thorn bush. A mouse sat under a tree. He was reading a book. A weasel jumped out and caught the mouse. See, he's got his tail. The weasel took the mouse home. Ah, said the weasel, I'm gonna make mouse soup. Oh, said the mouse, I'm going to be mouse soup. See, he's carrying him home right now. The weasel put the mouse in a cooking pot. Wait, said the mouse, this soup will not taste good. It has no stories in it. Mouse soup must be mixed with stories to make it taste really good. But I have no stories, said the weasel. I do, said the mouse, I can tell them now. All right, said the weasel, but hurry, I am very hungry. Here are four stories to put in the soup, said the mouse. Do you think maybe he's trying to trick that weasel? I think it's possible that's what he's doing. The bees and the mud. A mouse was walking through the woods. A nest of bees fell from a tree. It landed on top of his head. Bees, said the mouse, you will have to fly away. I do not want a nest of bees sitting on top of my head. But the bees said, we like your ears, we like your nose, we like your whiskers. Oh yes, this is a fine place for our nest. We will never fly away. The mouse was upset. I would be too. He's got a nest full of bees sitting on top of his head. He didn't know what to do. The buzzing of the bees was very loud. The mouse walked on and he came to a muddy swamp. Bees, said the mouse, I have a nest like yours. It is my house. If you want to stay on my head, you will have to come home with me. Oh, yes, said the bees. We like your ears. We like your nose. We like your whisper whiskers. We will be glad to come home with you. Very well, said the mouse. He stepped into the mud up to his knees. Look, he's walking into that swamp. Here is my front door, said the mouse. Oh, yes, said the bees. The mouse stepped into the mud up to his waist. That's up here. Oh, here's my living room, said the mouse. Oh, yes, said the bees. The mouse stepped into the mud up to his chin. Here is my bedroom, said the mouse. Oh, yes, said the bees. And now I will go to sleep, said the mouse. He ducked his head under the mud. Oh, no, said the bees. We like your front door. We like your living room. We like your bedroom. But no, 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 we do not like your bed. The bees jumped up into the air and flew away. The mouse went home and took a bath. The two large stones. Two large stones sat on the side of a hill. Grass and flowers grew there. This side of the hill is nice, said the first stone, but I wonder what's on the other side of the hill. We do not know. We never will, said the second stone. One day a bird flew down. Bird, can you tell us what's on the other side of the hill, asked the stones. The bird flew up into the sky. He flew high over the hill. He came back and said, I see towns and castles, mountains and valleys. It's a wonderful sight. The first stone said, all of those things are on the other side of the hill. How sad, said the second stone. We cannot see them and we never will. The two stones sat on the, si sat on the side of the hill. They felt sad for 100 years. That's a really long time. 
One day a mouse walked by. Mouse, can you tell us what is on the other side of the hill, asked the stones. The mouse climbed up a hill. He put his nose up over the top and he looked down. He came back and said, I can see earth and stones and grass and flowers. It is a wonderful sight. The first stone said, the bird told us a lie. That side of the hill looks just the same as this side of the hill. Oh, good, said the second stone. We feel happy and we always will. Now, what do you think happened there? I don't think that the bird was lying and I don't think the mouse was either. I think they saw it from two different perspectives. The mouse was down low and could only see grass and stones and the bird flew high in the sky so he could see everything for miles around. Here's the next part of the story. It's called the crickets. One night a mouse woke up. There was a chirping sound outside her window. What is that noise? Asked the mouse. What did you say? Asked a cricket. I cannot hear you and make my music at the same time. Well, I want to sleep, said a mouse. I do not want any more music. What did you say? They said the cricket. You want more music? I will find a friend. Soon there were two crickets. I want you to stop the music, said the mouse. You are giving me more. What did you say, said the cricket? You want more music? We will find another friend. Soon there were three crickets chirping. You must stop the music, said the mouse. I am tired. I cannot take much more. What did you say, asked the cricket? You want much more music? We will find many friends. Soon there were ten chirping crickets. Stop, cried the mouse. Your music is too loud. Loud, asked the cricket. Yes, we can chirp loud. So the ten crickets chirped so very loud. Please, shouted the mouse. I want to go to sleep. I wish you would all go away. Go away, asked the cricket. Why didn't you say so in the first place? We will go away and chirp somewhere else, said the ten crickets. And they went away and chirped somewhere else. And the mouse went back to sleep. The thorn bush. An old lady went to her door of her house and she was crying. A policeman came running. Dear lady, said the policeman, why are you crying? Come in, said the old lady, and I will show you. Look, there is a thorn bush growing in my living room chair, said the old lady. How did it get there, asked the policeman. I do not know, said the old lady. One day I sat down and something hurt me. I got up and there was a thorn bush. You poor lady, said the policeman. I will pull the thorn bush out of your chair, then you can sit down again. No, cried the lady. Don't do that. I do not want to sit down. I've been sitting down all of my life. I love my thorn bush. I'm cry thorn bush. I'm crying because it is sick. See, said the old lady, all the branches seem to be falling over. Oops, skipped a page. The thorn bush may be thirsty, said the policeman. Perhaps it needs water. I never thought of that, said the old lady, and she poured some water on the chair. The thorn bush shivered and shook. Green leaves came out of the branches. Little buds came out near their leaves. The buds opened up and became large roses. Thank you, kind policeman, cried the old lady. You have saved my thorn bush. You've made my house beautiful. She kissed the policeman and gave him a big bunch of roses to take home. There, said the mouse, I have told you my stories. Now they will make your mouse soup taste really good. All right, said the weasel, but how can I put stories in my soup? Said the mouse, that will be easy. Run outside and find a nest of bees, some mud, two large stones, ten crickets, and a thorn bush. Come back and we will put it all into the soup. The weasel ran outside very fast, but he forgot to close the door. The weasel found a nest of bees and he got stung many times. Look at those stingers all over his face. And there's the mouse sneaking away, carrying his little book. The weasel found some mud. It was wet and gooey. The weasel found two very large stones and they were heavy. The weasel found 10 crickets and had to jump to catch them. The weasel found a thorn bush and he was pricked and scratched. Now my mouse soup will taste really good, said the weasel, but when the weasel came back to his house, he found a surprise. That cooking pot was empty. The mouse hurried to his safe home. He lit the fire and he ate his supper. And he finished reading his book. <laughs>